welcome back to another episode of the Hersey Girls Hoops podcast. In this episode, our hosts sit down with senior Avery Larson and coach Mary Fenley to reflect on the undefeated season and talk about Avery's impact on defense. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the last episode of the Hersey Girls Hoops podcast for this season. My name is Megan Cleavy, and joining alongside me, as always, is my co-host, Gia Scrudlin. Joining us this week is Coach Fenley and senior Avery Larson. Thank you both for joining us today, and how are you guys doing? Great, thanks for having us. Thanks. Well, we want to start off with saying congratulations on a great season. Despite COVID being in the way, you guys didn't let that affect your season as you guys finished with the perfect season of 16-0, and so congrats on that. Now that the season has been over for a week, Coach, we've talked in the previous episodes about how senior heavy this team is and how they made a huge impact on this season. Knowing that they ended on a high note, does that make the goodbye slightly easier? Uh, well, <laughs> as Aves knows, I am a crier. And it, yeah, I, yes and no. It made it, e- you know, I guess it made it easier knowing that it was our last game. You know, usually you go into your final pregame thinking and hoping you're going to win, but in the back of your mind, you know, it could be your last game. And um, this one, we knew it was our last game. And so but we had such our eye on the prize. And I think we were so appreciative of like having the season, like we've talked about that, that part of it made it easier. The fact that the, this group of seniors is just like the, the best that made it harder because they're just, you know, you can't replace the leadership and the, the vibe that they gave to our team. Like not just this year, but last year and getting through COVID and summer not really playing. So. Yeah. For sure. Avery, what did it mean to you that you would be able to have your senior season and what will be your biggest takeaway from the Hersey basketball program? I mean, I was just like, I was just glad that we had any sort of season, like even though it was shortened, it was, it was still like nice to end off like, uh, like the senior season and finish it off strong with like a 16-0 win, um, win streak. So that was great. I mean, I took away so many things from Hersey basketball, like just having a blast at like every practice. I don't know. It was just like, enjoy the like little moments like with your teammates and stuff was like the biggest thing I think were there any life lessons that you learned from being on the program um life I I mean like always be on time was like a big one because like um my junior year we were like late for one of our games and we had a talking to from the coaches (laughs) so um from then on we were all pretty much early like to everything so yeah being on time is always I think a good skill to have (laughs) um so coach your team proved that they deserve that top class four ranking at the start of the season so what kind of drills and parts of the game specifically did you have your players work on consistently throughout the season uh, to show that that ranking was accurate and right we well we probably didn't introduce as many things as we typically would have in a season but I do think we had this giant advantage that we had these kids that already had the foundation of like a lot of our offenses, you know, I didn't, we did, um, we did less defenses. even. We never really even did a three, two zone. So like we had this strong foundation with so many returners. I mean, Aves wasn't a returner last year, but she played, you know, as much, if not more as a returner. So, you know, I guess to answer the question, we, we didn't really change anything. We just got lucky that it didn't hurt us that we didn't have time to add things. So friend is always tough competition, no matter what sport you play. Um, but this year, you guys seem to have the agenda for basketball. So coach, what do you think contributed uh, to that, to those, both of those uh, great wins? You know, I, I truly believe that last year we had a very special team last year. We were good. Um, but friend had this like senior leadership that just one point, they beat us by one point. I, I match our, I think our skill matched them last year, but I think they had like eight seniors last year. 
and it was their time. And I, I just feel it was their time last year and they earned that state championship. And I just felt this year was our time. Like we, we had the skill, we had the talent, we had the chemistry and we had the senior leadership. I mean, I mean, it's not just, it's, it's this group of eight seniors. They always clicked and they were so like, I don't know if you, if you caught our games, there was something like special between like Avery and Katie Idol. I, I swear to God, it, Avery worked so hard, but the second she gets open, Katie would find her. I mean, and then all of a sudden Avery's scoring before anybody even knows the ball is down there. Like, but that just comes with like time and chemistry and, you know, Avery being a senior and Katie being a sophomore, they still, we had enough time and they had the chemistry to figure that out. And I think, you know, that's an example of it. It's our time. I mean, we, we, we have all the pieces. It was short, but we were able to put it together. And I think, I think it's a testament to the seniors. So you did mention Katie and you also mentioned how Avery's a senior. So do you think that the senior leadership has not only helped um, Katie, I guess, grow on varsity, but also like some under, more underclassmen, like the juniors that well, I'm guessing going to be uh, starting next year. Yeah, Aves, what do you think? Um, yeah, I feel like just having like eight seniors is huge. And I think like every one of us kind of brought something different to the table. So like, I feel like the underclassmen kind of learned something different from like each one of us. And I think that'll definitely help like improve the team next year. And like each of them will take something and like apply it to the team next year, I guess. So from a player's standpoint, I guess this is kind of going back to the original question I had, um, but was there anything that you changed um, during practice and about your game that would help you guys when not only against friend, but also against the other really tough competition? I, I think it was like, I, and Aves might think differently, but I, I guess it was more just like, you get to like, focus on next level things when you know you have the basics down. So we didn't have to drill in little things, how to set a good screen, how to box out. I mean, Aves always box out. You never, we didn't have to have drills to remind the kids to box out. So we got to kind of build on next level things. And these eight seniors, they were more than half of our team. And I think she said it perfectly. Like it wasn't just the skills that they pick up and how to run the drills and what to do on the offenses. They like presented this whole, like it's a whole work ethic thing that they have hopefully handed down and that, you know, we only had one starter that wasn't a senior, but the four seniors like welcomed her in. And like, hopefully as time goes on, like the kids that are now the seniors can do the same thing and welcome in younger kids. And just like these guys did. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I feel like a big part of like practice was we just like had fun with it like I think a lot of teams will get like too serious and then they like won't perform well in the games and I think like us being like just having fun and like enjoying practice actually like helped us more in the long run. Team bond that you guys have is pretty evident to you on the court just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. yeah, and Avery, this was your only season starting on varsity, but to have Coach Fenley start you, what did that mean to you? Um, I think it was just, like, a great testament to, like, the work that I'd put in, like, prior seasons. Like, I've been on the, the Hersey basketball program since a freshman, so it was, like, really cool just to be able to, like, get the handshakes going out to start, like, every game. I don't know. I just loved it. You know, and Aves is a great um, statement of how our program works. You know, she was a starter on the freshman A team with Coach Freeman, and then she was a starter with Coach Myers on the JV team. And then she was like our, J our varsity B MVP last year at, and our first kid off the bench for varsity. And, and then this year, starting varsity. But just to be clear, like there are a lot of teams in our conference where Aves would have been a starter on the varsity team as a sophomore. It's just the way that chips kind of fell, but she always like, she, she was, she always excelled at the level she was playing at. She was all conference this year, you know? And if, if she was on another team, you would, you know, 
she'd be their leading scorer. She wasn't our leading scorer because we needed her to rebound and set screens and reverse the ball. And she did all those things like perfectly. Yeah, so you just mentioned um, how big Avery was on the offense, I'm sorry, defensive and offensive side, I guess, with the rebounds and the putback. So what did you work on in practice, Avery, to make sure that you would get those opportunities and score the points that way? Um, honestly, like, I feel like I always, like, focus more on defense. Like, I came into the season knowing, like, I didn't really need to be, like, that offensive scorer because, like, we already had so many of those on, like, in, in our starting lineup. And so, like, I think my defense kind of led my offense, like, getting, like, deflections or steals, like, and helping in transition kind of, like, um, help me make cuts or, like, get open in the post. I think, like, most of my points were like um, block shots. So like just being able to um, like do a post move or something just to like chip away those point, those little points, I feel like. You know, yeah, our, so one, our one close game was Maine South and it was back-to-back -back baskets by Avery that allowed us to like stretch that game out and win it. Like no doubt about it. Like she just, she's just always exactly where she needs to be. And, and then you have it you know, our guards being able to find her and her fighting for position or getting a rebound put back. Like, it's just, it's obviously you need the talent to be able to do it, but then she had the smarts to, to make herself available to when we needed it. So we mentioned earlier that you guys went, did go undefeated this season and it didn't seem like there were any problems on offense as you guys outscored almost all of your opponents by 20 points. So how did the defense, I guess, play a role in allowing those uh, disparaging results? What do you think, Aves? Um, I feel like our defense kind of, I feel like our defense was actually really good this year. Like we, we seem to like mesh really well, like with calling out screens and, and like trying to stay on our player. Like we didn't switch a lot. So I think, um, and like our, um, our like man to man was good. And I think like our presses like four and cross were actually like yeah, super yeah. good because we, we would just get like steals and deflections off of those. And then those would just lead us into offense. So I think yeah. we didn't really, we kind of got a lot of our defensive motivation from like our transition and stuff. Yeah, we really did. Like our, she said four is like our half court trap, which was super effective. And then we do a full court diamond too which it ignited a lot of our offense so and any time you know besides actually scoring off of it it's super frustrating when teams can't get it past half court and so that was it was something that like these guys are just athletic enough and smart enough to get to spots and be able to make those defenses work yeah, knowing that your team was so stacked this season compared to the others in the area, like, were there any team goals that you guys had at the beginning of the season that you didn't get to accomplish, you know, due to the shortened season? <laughs> we didn't get to set goals because of <laughs> the shortened We honestly didn't. Like, it was one day we were, like, supposed to have individual workouts, and then the next day they were like, okay, you're in season. We're like, what? Like, we – it was so – we never had like a formal, let's sit down, let's do goals. Like the kids all filled out individual goal cards, but it wasn't like this. I think we were just so like fingers crossed all the time that we didn't make this like long list of team goals, except for when every game we have the opportunity to play. Avery, what was one of your personal goals? Um, I think... My personal, well, I know, my personal, you know what it said. My personal goal was to like be the. I think it was like the leading rebounder on the it team this was. year. It was, and she was. Um, and then like I think a team goal was just like win conference. That was like the biggest thing, and we did that as well. So, yeah. Both the team. I think last year Mary McGrath led our team in rebounding. Correct. Does that sound right to you, Abe's? And so, um, so our leading re rebounder returned, but she still was our leading rebounder. And I think that's amazing too. 
would you like ever go up against her and like practice or anything like that? Like, would there any be like any comp fun competitions? I guess for rebounding. I don't think we really like had like rebounding drills. I mean, like just scrimmages and like I don't know. Yeah. You know, besides having like half the number of practices, actually less than half. About a our season went from nineteen weeks to like six weeks. So. We had a third less practices and our practices were always only 90 minutes. So like you didn't have time to do like the competitive drills. You know, it, it was just so different. Practices were so different, but like Ave said, like we, they were actually pretty fun. Like it wasn't, I think we we're always so kind of worried about it all ending. Like we didn't want to end it on a, like doing ladders for 30 minutes of our 90 minutes. <laughs> We did do this a couple times though. Good for you. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong on this, but over the summer there was like some type of COVID exposure or outbreak um during the contact days. Um it was over the summer it was wasn't it like uh it wasn't the varsity. We never got shut down. You, no. Okay, you guys okay. It, and during the summer there was a freshman kid or not the summer. It was the uh, fall. We had fall contact days and our fresh yeah. soft shut down. And then during the season, our freshman A team were, were exposed at another from another team. So we never had a positive kid, but we had our freshman A team played against, you know, a kid the next day found out was positive. So um, we varsity, we, we dodged the bullet. <laughs> so like, I know you said that you guys didn't have any COVID problems, but other teams did. Um, so did you ha like set any guidelines or precautions to make sure that your season wouldn't be um, paused or halted and shortened more than it already was? Did you guys do anything differently? I mean, I told them they shouldn't have pasta parties. I mean, we kind of all just like knew we didn't want to shut down. So we were like, just like be respectful of everyone. And like, we all knew like, this was, we didn't have that long of a season anyways. So just do your best. I mean, we didn't have any like specific rules or anything, but. Once well, we were in the final week, then like, you know, in the restaurants opened back up. There were a couple of times we went out like after, but you know, all following the rules and stuff and knowing that, you know, uh, the coaches were all vaccinated by then. Coach Barthel and I were vaccinated, so a little different at the end, but we still didn't want to do one thing that might, you know, shorten it even more. Yeah, well, this was without a doubt a season like no other, but do you guys think there are any long-term effects this season will have on the following years, you know, both at Hersey and within the state? That's a really good question. I, you know, for me, it's, I feel like just like kind of more so appreciating a normal season. Like, yeah, I, I can't wait to get back to the grind of a season and two hour practices and 19 weeks, you know, if you play downstate and it was so not like that, that I think it's just build on a new appreciation and you know honestly I'll probably make practices shorter like I feel like I could do a better job of being efficient in even if it's once or twice a week we don't need two hour practices every day so maybe like something like that to keep everybody fresh and sharp and having fun yeah, maybe that's something I learned do you have anything to add Avery whether it's from a basketball standpoint or just life in general um, I think it was just like a memorable season and I know I'll remember it forever. I think our team will, but like, I'm sure there'll be like lasting effects at Hersey because this is like one of the Hersey's best teams, but yeah, other than that, no. I haven't gotten much like feedback or any feedback from like administration or anything, but I, you know, I think I'll go to battle. I think we can hopefully get one of those plaques on the wall and um, the, the Brian Walters, who is the Justin's ring rep talked about getting us, you know, some rings. And so 
I hope that like these girls can be recognized and not like exactly how we would have wanted it, like hoisting the trophy at Redbird Arena. But I hope that these girls will get recognized for like the unbelievable season that they put together. Well, I think it's time to transition to the more exciting part of the podcast with the rapid fire questions. So the first one we have for you guys is what is your favorite like board game or card game? I like Cole and I play Monopoly once in a while. Yeah, I usually beat them too. Facts. You didn't hear me. Um, I think I would go with a card game. Uh, my favorite's Egyptian Rats Lab. It gets pretty intense. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I remember that game was really big I think like middle school or something at least when I was yeah there. Yeah. yeah um so as we all know March Madness is finally here and there's already been some upsets today but who do you guys have winning the championship Illini 100% same I have Illinois winning too <laughs> I like those answers <laughs> yeah sure oh sorry um what's your favorite Disney movie Oh, I love Aladdin, both the old one and the new one. Um, my favorite is definitely Tangled. This is kind of, I guess, not really a rapid fire question, but are you guys fans of the remakes? I know there's been a lot of remake movies with the, in the Disney world, so. Yeah, I, I, I think I've pretty much always been okay with the remakes. remakes. Yeah, I like the new Aladdin, actually. Yeah, I think that was good. Fun, yeah. Yeah, I like that one too. And then the final question is what is your dream vacation? I'm going to Hawaii. Never been there, but I feel like I feel like I need to with my state. Mine is probably Bora Bora. Ooh. I feel like it's yeah, always been there. Yeah. Who doesn't love a beach vacation? <laughs> Well, we'll end it on that note. Congrats on an awesome historic season. And thank you guys both for joining us. And thanks to the listeners for tuning in on this season's Hersey Girls Hoops podcast. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, and Thank you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Aves. Thank Have you. a great night, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. You too.